I'm building this table for a client, so sorting through this lumber, my priority is getting the cleanest, most premium pieces possible, instead of trying to maximize the yield, which is my normal approach. That makes my first step marking any defects in the lumber so I can work around them, and then breaking everything down into more manageable pieces. This walnut will be the base of the table, and then I do the same thing for the cherry that's going to make up the top. The milling process is the same as always. I start at the jointer to get a straight edge and flat face, rip the opposite edge of the table saw, and then plane the opposite face of the planer. Then I let it sit overnight and do it again. Dried lumber has a lot of tension in it, and almost every time you cut into it, you change the balance of the tension, and the wood will move. Because of that, the best way to get straight and flat boards that stay that way is to mill it over several days and sneak up on the final dimension. I found that three milling sessions over three to five days produces really stable lumber, so that's what I do here. Whenever I do a panel glue up, like a tabletop, I hand plane the edges first to get the best possible glue joint. I do this in pairs so I know that the edges that will be glued together are perfectly matched. After all the edges are hand planed, I fill for and mark where the planer may have left snipe at the end of the board. Snipe is just a tiny dip in the face, and it's just part of the milling process. I keep my lumber long so I can cut this off later and still have the length that I need. The trick to a good glue up is to reverse it. I dry clamp everything so all my clamps are preset, and then I break it down, apply the glue, and clamp it all back together. The far end of this panel isn't quite coming together right though, so I add calls to it to flatten it out. And I like to glue up large panels in small sections, and then glue those together to keep the process more manageable. The other trick to a good panel glue up is just the right amount of pressure. Too little and you're not going to have a good glue joint, but too much and the panel is going to turn out like a brick. Once the panel dries, I cut the ends square and the whole thing down to a loop using my circular saw and a straight edge. Now I can lay out where the base will sit so I can copy the angle of the intersection to cut the half laps on the stretchers after I cut them to length and mark the middle. I use an off cut that's the same thickness as the stretchers to precisely mark out the cut location for the half laps. Then I use my bevel gauge again to set my miter gauge on the table saw to the right angle and sneak up on the cuts. I use a dado stack to hog out the material. The dado stack isn't tall enough to remove all the material in the pieces. After getting all I can on the table saw, I pull out my shoulder plane and tune up the half lap until it's perfect. Next, I mark and make the holes for the bolts that'll hold the base to the tabletop. These are elongated to allow the tabletop to move during the seasons. Otherwise, the top would rip itself from the base when it expands in the summer with the humidity. I drill out most of the waste and then chisel the rest. I use two different size drill bits to create a countersink so that way the bolt head won't be visible underneath the tape. Now is a good time to put the taper on the bottom of the stretchers. I do this after drilling the holes and cutting the half laps because both of those operations would have been a lot more challenging with the taper on one side. To make sure both the stretchers come out identical, I make a jig for my router. But before routing them, I remove most of the waste of the bandsaw just to make the routing go a bit easier. And when I go to route, I put an off cut 
in the half flap that I have to route over to keep the grain from blowing out. Before moving on to the legs, I mark on the underside of the tabletop where the base will attach. Then I use a salt trick to accurately transfer the holes so I can place some threaded inserts in the tabletop. Oh, is that what you want? That's how you get ants! I'm going with threaded inserts and bolts instead of screws in case this table has to be broken down and moved. The threaded insults and bolts are going to last longer and there won't be any worry of the hole stripping out like screws might cause. The first thing I do to make the legs is make a template. These legs are angled, which means they have to be longer than the height. So instead of messing around with triangle math, I just use a drywall and framing square to find the length. All I care about is that when these things are standing up, the top is 29 and 3 quarters of an inch off the ground. Then I mark out the taper that'll be on the inside of the legs and make a tapering jig for my table saw to cut all the legs identically. The jig is just some plywood scraps with CA glue, brad nails, and some toggle clamps. Once the template is done, I use it to mark the legs out of the blanks. The pieces overlap on the blanks, so I break them down on the bandsaw. To cut the legs in length, I set up the stop on my miter station with an offcut featuring the same angle as will be on the legs to make sure I have good contact. Then I cut the first angle on the leg, slide it down to the stop, and cut the leg to length. Now they're ready to go on the tapering jig and get run through the table saw. With the stretchers and legs at their final shape, I can move on to cutting the half laps to join them. I mark each joint individually just in case there's any differences between the pieces to make sure I get the best fit. Now my X-Acto knife leaves a much thinner line than a pencil, so I tape each piece, clamp them together, and score the tape where the cut needs to be. I like this technique because it gives me a precise but really obvious boundary. And again, I pull out my bevel gauge so I can transfer the angle from the tape to the miter gauge on the table saw. Then it's time for the dado stack to hog out most of the material. I stop just shy of the line though so the joint will be a bit proud. Then I switch to my hand planes and sneak up on a perfect fit before gluing the legs and stretchers together. To reinforce and accent these joints, I'm going to install some brass pins. I make a template to mark the brass pin locations on the joints, then drill them out at the drill press. Before gluing the pins in, I scuff them with sandpaper to get a better glue bond, and some blue tape helps keep the epoxy off the wood. The last finishing touch is the bevel on the underside of the tabletop to give it a lighter look. I do this in three passes with my router to get the best finish. Then I go through my sanding regime of 120, 150, and 220 grit, but I pop the grain of water between each grit. Then a tack cloth removes any dust and I can start applying the finish. To finish this, I use three coats of General Finish's Armor Seal, sanding, and then wiping the dust away with the 400 grit sandpaper between each coat. I assemble the table off camera in the client's home before taking some beauty shots. You'll see some chairs I made to match the table in those shots, and that'll be my next video. So make sure to subscribe and hit that bell if you want to see that one when it comes out. Thanks for watching. Please let me know what you think of this in the comment box, and I'm going to go ahead and shut up and let you enjoy the rest of this.